I really want one. It's Bernadette. I am the creator and channel of da, 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 the now award winning, I have to be honest, I'm very proud of that. Um, <laughs> Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. We were the product of the year this year at the 2020 um, Cover Visionary Awards, which is kind of like the Academy Awards of the metaphysical industry. So thank you to all of you guys out there that have uh, supported us through Kickstarter and through um, buying the deck and loving the deck and leaving great reviews and spreading the word. I just thank you so much. And um, continuing with our tarot card meetings and tarot reading series, uh, I am joined by my beloved soul sister, um, beautiful goddess, witchy poo, I, amazing tarot reader, amazing author. There's nothing this woman can't do. And I just love, 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 love her. And I know you do too, because you write me and tell me. Um, Dana Winters. So yay, Dana. And Happy to be um, here. yes, um, <laughs> I know I drug you kicking and screaming in front of the camera. Y'all, she hates to be in front of the camera, but yeah. she's doing it for you. She's taking it. She's taking one for the team because she loves tarot and people so much. So, um, yes. but she will never, ever call herself an award-winning author. Um, so I do it for her. And Dana, what are your books that are with Shipper Publishing? Um, I co-authored Wicca. What's the real deal? Uh, Sacred Objects, Sacred Space, and the Esoteric Dream Book. Um, and there's more in the works, but that's in the future. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So today we are talking about one of my favorite cards, the Two of Cups. You know, Triple Scorpio. I'm all about the feels. I'm all about the emotions. And so I would, I, Pentacles and Cups, I love to talk about them all day long. And so um, just so that we can be for sure, for sure to get this, um, Danny, you have this really cool thing that I learned from you where it's really kind of about the, um, the, the journey to maturity that mm -hmm. someone takes through the minor arcana. And yes. could you, could you go through that for us really quickly? Um, I, I call it the emotional progression, um, where wands represent someone who's the least emotionally mature, they're youthful. Um, you know, talking about teenagers and, and still working through emotions and learning how to express and learning to get the foresight of, of you know, someone's actions. And then there's cups, which is uh, the next level up uh, to emotional, emotional maturity, which represents um, the area of feeling, starting to master feelings, starting to express feelings and learning how to express itself, exploring, you know, deep, even like deeply hidden feelings and overcoming emotional wounds. The swords is the next level up from that. And that's about cutting away what doesn't serve you in your life, kind of really honing everything down to you. So you, it's kind of like you, at that point, you're like a, an emotional diamond in the rough and you're chiseling yourself out to a, a state of emotional maturity that's even deeper, what's true to you. And then the highest level of progression is the pentacles because you live what you value. You choose what you value. You, you, you designed your ethics and, and morals and you're living that out accordingly. So it's a, a four-stage level of emotional progression for every human being. So y'all, just so you know, I'm immature. Because I'm, I'm totally immature, <laughs> which I already knew this about myself because I'm stuck in cups, right? No, I'm just, so, um, okay, so one of the things that we like to do for you guys is, um, is go through the metaphysical correspondences of each tarot card. And that's, you know, the element, the direction, the numerology, the associated um, zodiac signs. And, and the reasons for that are when you know those metaphysical correspondences, man, it can, it can really open your kind of receptors about how to interpret the symbolism and meaning of that particular tarot card when you're giving a reading. So case in point with the Two of Cups, um, its element of, is, of course, water. And we've already talked about that. It's taking the deep dive into those emotions, yours and others. Um, its cardinal direction then is west. And West is uh, about, you know, uh, abundance and um, help me out here, Dana. I'm, I'm Emotions, dreams, um, yeah. spirit communication in some sense. Very um, much. It's very much the realm of spirit. So emotions, uh, but also the, I would say the flow of energy, energetic flow, because of the way water, water moves. So, yeah. Right. And West, uh, West is also associated with the season of uh, fall. Yes. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You guys, it's not that we don't know these things. We've been doing this for so long. Sometimes, you know, like when your mom or, you know, is like, I, I said, 
you know, Susie James, and then they'll, she'll say the name of the dog and the name of the oh bird and the name of the yes. grandmother. And then she'll name everybody in the family, family before she gets to you. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of like that. So, um, and of course, you know, the, each number uh, in, in the tarot is associated with a, with a, a meaning from its, its numerology. So twos mean one thing, threes mean something else, four means something. And twos, uh, from a numerology standpoint, is about harmony and balance and people coming together and things coming together and business, you know, everything just coming together, but it's not really that simple. Is it Dana? Right. No, because it can also represent, um, duality and opposition or paradox. Yeah. Uh, you know, a puzzle, two pieces of a puzzle that are opposing, but they fit together. So that creates a, almost like something that's unanswerable. Um, so it's not always simple. Right. Now, the Two of Cups in particular, um, it does really, its overarching meanings do have to do with perfect harmony and sacred unions of all kinds. Um, but I'd like to take a, a little bit of a dive into the actual symbolism on the card based on the artwork. And then, of course, you know, color meanings will come into play and we'll talk about that for a second. But when, when, Dana, when Dana and I read, we have different decks that we love. Um, but we, our readings are done with anything that is rider weight based, uh, a rider weight deck. And that's really kind of the, the, the big player in the field. And so when you're learning the meanings of the card, it's also really important that you learn what each of the symbols are like, why does this person have a laurel wreath on their head, but this person may have pomegranates or roses and why are these, these, why is this person wearing these boots that are this color? And why is in the background, there's a house with a red roof? You know, why is there a lion in a caduceus? So let's talk about some of those things because, um, you know, Dame, Dana, uh, one of the reasons I, I invited her and well, okay, that's a lie. I begged her to do <laughs> this tarot series with me. It, I just never met anyone who knows symbolism like she does. And I know a lot of people, y'all, I've been doing this a long time, but my God, she's the most learned person when it has to do with symbolism. And I know the symbolism, not to the extent she does, but to a pretty high extent, but that's not my style. My style is more intuitive. So I might take a look at the, um, I might take a look at the two of cups card and I might really like, you guys see me looking like this. I might not really see anything else in the card except for the caduceus. And that might alert me to somebody's partner. Um, I, I, I tend to see this card a lot and I tend to be drawn to the caduceus a lot when a woman who comes to see me is trying to get pregnant or wants to know um, if, if she is pregnant, uh, which I always wonder why they come to me instead of just taking a pregnancy test. But anyway, um, and so the lion also means different things to different people and you can be attracted with your intuition to different things. So. Um, when we talk about, you know, overall, kind of the overall view of uh, the Two of Cups in the tarot, how do you see it kind of overall, Dana? And, let, and let's talk about some of that symbolism. So go, sister, go, get on a tarot rant. Well, it does seem to have a celebratory air when you look at it, because it almost looks like two people are toasting at a wedding or something, where they're, they're both drinking champagne. So it's really a card of agreement when it's upright. Anything that's agreement. Now that could be business, it could be partnerships, you know, con contractual agreements, whether they're spoken or unspoken, um, agreements of feeling. Um, but it's also about inviting someone into your reality, someone into your world, into your life, and someone accepting that invitation. So it's an equal give and take. When I see that as a, a relationship card, for me, it's, it sometimes represents marriage, especially if other cards support it. Um, but it, it, there's also uh, some tricky symbolism in there that can, when you're looking at it in reverse, that really gives the card a different meaning. Um, if you look at the, where the people are standing, they're staring on, standing on barren ground. So even though they have this celebratory air, they're really looking at it being as ground zero. Like uh, they're, they, they're either starting over or they're having a new start. And that caduceus between them is really suggestive of healing. Now that, that belongs to the god Hermes or Mercury, depending on whatever you know, if you're looking at the Greek God or the Roman God, but they both mean the same thing. And that really is a communication being a pillar to help heal whatever gap is going on between the two of them. 
whether that's inviting each other back into each other's lives or just healing a communication gap that's been broken or healing something, um, not maybe not necessarily emotional, but physical, like they've been apart physically and they're, they're coming back together in the same atmosphere. Now, if you look at the background of the card, there's like a, a little white house in the background. It kind of alludes to, to, for me, it alludes to the Ten of Cups where you get that happily ever after feeling. And if you think about it, if the way they're standing, it looks like it's just a sidestep to happily ever after from barren ground if they're careful. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. It does. And also um, for me, when I take a look at this card, you know, you, you, you just went through um, the Two of Cups upright and then the Two of Cups reversed. And so... Yeah, I ran away with it. I'm sorry. You said drive no, on it. No, no, no. Go, go, go. go. Because, because the flow of that is, is just really so easy to follow, you know, because people can get very, very stuck in, um, you know, some people don't read with the reversed version of the card at all. But some people, when they're starting out as readers, or I've even seen really experienced readers, get just so stuck in upright means this, inverted means this, or reverse means this. And they don't necessarily take into consideration a lot of the other symbolism, like say, for instance, so the zodiac sign, you know, because this is a card that is, you know, all cups are water cards, right? And this particular card is very associated with the zodiac sign of cancer. Well, I always encourage people when they're learning uh, how to read tarot to learn at the very, very least in the metaphysical correspondences, learn the zodiac signs because other than the sign of Libra, they're all associated with an animal, even Gemini, which is human. But I, I maintain that a human can be a spirit totem or power animal. But that can give you some extra clues if you understand the personality and traits of that particular zodiac sign. So like with cancers, they're very, very famous for being unbelievably unsure of themselves, unconfident and fear-based. Oh my gosh. And when they're hurt, they scurry back into that shell. And sometimes they'll stay there alone for years and years and years while their little beady eyes are watching out to see if it's, you know, safe to come out into the water. And oftentimes they never do. So um, even though they're in conflict because they walk sideways. Yeah, exactly. Now, having said that, there is also another side to when you just take the animal, the crab, they can be fearless. I mean, as tiny as they are, they don't care how big you are. They will take you on. And, and so there is, again, which makes good sense why cancer is the zodiac sign for this particular tarot card. There's that duality there, right? But the Kabbalists call this, uh, call the Two of Cups card, um, the Lord of Love. So it's like if you've been waiting for Mr. or Ms. Wright in a, in a human relationship, it's on its way upright, uh, the upright meaning of this card. Um, it, but I even, I even take that to mean the perfect job, um, the perfect weight or size, the perfect um, place that you want to live, you know, any, anything that is a relationship to you, the perfect pet. Uh, I hate calling them pets. I like calling them companions um, or just family members. But um, it's, it's, again, it's really about how are you feeling inside because the caduceus that's, you know, the intertwined snakes, that's another part of it. It does mean healing because when it comes to anything shamanic or really anything having to do with uh, animal meanings at all, snakes are absolutely the sign of healing. Um, they are the sign of being able to completely shed your skin and, and, and come out brand new, which when, you know, listen, all readers, I mean, my God, I don't know that we'd ever make a living <laughs> if it weren't for people calling us about their relationships. Right. But, um, it's like, if you see this card and someone's, you know, got questions about their relationship, you can get a lot of information from those snakes because intuitively, you you could glean well are they on the other side of healing is there a lot more healing that has to be done how did that healing go how how was it you know are they going to be able to make it or they're not going to be able to make it whereas the winged lion that's above their head um dana you had a really interesting thing you associate that lion with the 
one of the four evangelists. If you look at the the wheel of fortune, there's a lion head, an ox head, an eagle head, and of course a human head, which is ironic because you talk about humans being spirit animals. Um, the lion head is associated with Leo, I and mean, you don't even need to know the four evangelists to know that, but it, it does relate to that as well. So uh, when I look at it upright, it's about a healing that takes off with great strength because the head has wings. Okay. Um, when, it, when I look at it in reverse, I think I, people who are unsure-footed about the healing going in and whether or not it's going to work. Yep. Um, and how do, you, how do you perceive the wings as part of it? Because, listen, something not just, taking flight, not being able to get off the ground. Okay. Um, you know, listen, you guys, there are about a jillion books out there um, about tarot symbolism and meaning, and no one of them is more right than the next because, let's face it, this is something that has been gleaned and made up over time um and and when i say made up i'm not denigrating uh the art of tarot reading or the accuracy of tarot reading at all i'm telling you i it, of all the things that i have, i study a lot no no problem i study a lot of the science of psi and uh you know i i i based on what we know of science today man there's an awful lot of compelling evidence as to why people are psychic we can look into past lives. We can look into future lives. We can talk to people that have crossed over mediumship. Uh, and there's even a lot of evidence that would point, point to psychometry with being the, the reason that the right card falls for the right person on the right day. Uh, but I have had some crazy things happen. Lots of them, like a card will come flipping out of the deck that I, you know, I didn't mess up the deck. I didn't mess up the shuffle. I didn't drop the deck, but it'll come flying out and the the big thing in the tarot reading community is well that card must want to be read or must want to be part of this and i the magic that ensues every single time i i i don't i don't know that i'll ever see it as anything other than magic but when i see you know just from a purely animal standpoint lions are you know, they're golden. Their mane is golden. They're a solar symbol. They're about all things that breathe life and warmth into something. So when I see that upright, um, I know that no matter what else might be going on, the duality or whatever, that love, that pure, warm, passionate, fiery, even love is there. When I see the two of cups reversed, um, I always perceive it as when you, you know, unless it's got a lid on it, right? Okay. Um, when you, when you dump a cup upside down, it, all the, the contents spill out. And then when I see a lion on their head, I, I think, mm, you know, mm, the, you know, the, the love might be waning in this particular relationship, or maybe even was never there to begin with. So, um, when I also, you, go ahead. Well, we but I also look at that lion head as a key to perhaps a solution to the healing that, that, that takes place. Because you got it right above the caduceus. It's almost like the energy, the, the higher power that you should look to. So, like you said, it's a solar symbol. So, enlightenment into your situation. But it's, it's the king of the jungle. Now, Leos, you know, people with Leo-type temperaments, they tend to love to be doted on. So, pampering the other partner um, and doing it fairly. Because Leos get caught up in the limelight, just like any other cat. If you stroke that cat, they'll love it all day long. But they won't necessarily turn love on you. They just want you to stroke their fur. They want to sit in the window. <laughs> That's very independent. So you want to make sure that it's very well balanced. If you flip that card in reverse, it's a lessening of that doting. Maybe you're smothering that person. Maybe you're putting too much emphasis on giving them too much attention. So I always think that sometimes there's healing. The suggestion to your to heal your problem in the is right in the card if you look for it. Right. And that's um, really what we were kind of just going down the vein of is, um, you know, if you're use if you're doing a, 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 a tarot reading for love, which is again, a lot of the tarot readings, um, you know, the two of cups for love can mean all of these things. And, and here's what we're not doing. You guys, we're not trying to confuse you or take you around in circles, but I've read at this point, I've read over 35,000 people. I know Dana's got that number, maybe more because she's been working for one of the services for many, many years. Um, and oh, I don't know how you do it, girl. I couldn't keep up that pace, but um, I don't know some days either. I'm like, ah. <laughs> but, um, the, the point of going step by step by step and, 
little bit by little point by little point is so that as you mature as a reader, that you hopefully will start taking in all of this information as you can, as you feel like you want to, as you, as, as you can, because when you do the, the accuracy and the things that you can, the information that you can get that is so helpful to your clients or your, they're called sitters and also querents, um, <coughs> you, you will amaze yourself. Truly, you will amaze yourself. And then you'll be even more amazed at spirit, source, God, the universe, the angels, you know, what, whatever it is you believe in or all, you know, you believe in all of those things. And so when you're learning the basic meanings, we really hope that you'll take um, special care to learn all of these, not really extra things, but the detail kind of things. So for instance, I get this a lot, but <laughs> you know, people just want you to cut to the chase when they have a reading. They just want a yes or a no. The problem with that is it's like, this is my favorite thing. Um, a lot of people in the new age uh, industry or metaphysical industry, spiritual industry, they will say, you know, okay, make sure you repeat your mantra and ask only for something that's for your highest and best good. And when I hear that out of people, my hair stands up on end and I'm looking around for the bolts of lightning because when you've been in the spirituality game for enough time, you know that mostly huge leaps in your life of maturity, of understanding, of capabilities come from a total crash, face plant in the dirt, it's like the tower card where lightning bolts are coming and people are jumping for their lives and everything's on fire and it's horrible. It's so horrible. But when you get to the other side of it, hopefully you have a much deeper spiritual understanding of the whys, the wherefores, where you're headed now. And, you know, that which does not kill you makes you stronger, right? That's the hope of this. So when you are taking a look at, you know, let's say you've got an impatient client and, and I say this a lot. Okay, let's just do this. We'll just ask you yes or a no. It's like flipping a penny. If it's on its heads, it means yes. If it's you see tails, it means no. When, I, you know, we'll shuffle or sometimes I'll even hand them my deck and say, just pull the card that you feel you want to pull. And if the card is upright, theoretically, that's a yes for that tarot reading. And if it's inverted or reversed, then you know that's a no. But if you just tell them yes or no, so case in point, Dana, let's say, um, because, because this card is so much about love and, and sacred unions and that kind of thing, let's say that somebody comes in and whether it's husband or wife says, is, is my husband or wife going to leave me? And you, 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 you shuffle and you pull the two of cups upright. That's a yes, but. but it's a yes, but this also means healing is, is in the offering from that, which means they likely will, it'll be temporary and they'll come back because it shows invitation into each other's lives. It, it's like there's on barren ground, a sidestep to happiness. So if you don't ask for the details, all you're gonna get is a yes, and then you're gonna go off wallowing in the corner because you think your spouse is gonna leave you. So really asking the questions with the details is just as important. Yep. Kind of like doing a reading with the majors and not using the minors, which some people do. But I, I see you losing a whole wealth of detail if you do that. Yep. But some people do. And, you know, listen, if it's working for them and it's getting their people that really quality information that I hope every reader strives, you know, every tarot reader or psychic or reader or media, medium or whatever um, you know, strives to have, that's awesome. I have not found that to be the case. Um, but you know, but maybe other people do, but you know, when you, you know, when you go to that same kind of scenario and you take a look at the, um, you know, the laurel wreath around the woman, it, it's, it's like, a you know, that laurel wreath is very much about victory and eloquence, you know, being really able to express yourself in a almost a poetic kind of way. 
Whereas the, the rose crown on the fella is about um, love and passion. And she's dressed in white uh, and blue. And that shows devotion and spirituality. And, and his is a yellow tunic. And that symbolizes, that color symbolizes understanding. And so really you've got this great meeting of the minds. And so you have to look at it and say, okay, well, yeah, they're going to leave. But what does that really mean? I did a reading one time, um, and interesting, <laughs> interestingly enough, both these kids, because I, I work in, I mean, I'm in Gainesville, it's a university town, and we have one of the better um, medical colleges here. And so this young lady came in, and she wanted to know if he was going to leave. And they were both in medical school. And I said, well, I, he, yeah, I, I am getting yes. And I, I'm only bringing this up because ironically, it was the two of cards that I pulled. And I said, but, but not leave you. He, he's just leaving. Are you, I said, oh, you guys are having to go to different schools for your residency. This poor kid fell out. She was like, yes. And I'm just afraid that the distance is going to, you know, break us up and this and that. And I said, well, you know, focusing on it in that way is not going to be helpful. I said, but I don't see that. So yes, he is going to leave you, but only because he's going to be a distance from you. He's not going to leave you. And I said, and the other thing I said was, I said, don't take this the wrong way. I said, because it's really not as creepy as it sounds, but I keep seeing that he is your identical twin. Like, you may not really look all that similar, but honest to God, you guys have this crazy psychic link like true twins do. Like, you'll consistently show up wearing the same colors or you'll, oh, I said, I see actually, because this was back in the day of CDs, right? I said, actually, I see that you guys showed up one time uh, maybe it was Christmas or it was something else, but you bought each other the exact same CD and they did. So, you know, just be careful, you guys, when you're, you know, when you're feeling pressured to just get a yes or no for a, you know, a client that's like, ah, don't, don't give them just a yes. Or, I mean, do whatever you want to do, but I would encourage you. I'm sure Dana would encourage you, please don't give them just a yes or no. And conversely, when you see, um, in a yes or no reading, if you see the two of uh, cups reversed, and let's say it's a different question. Let's say it's about a job this time. And let's say it's this job that this person really, 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 really wants. And maybe they know they're down to the last three people. And they're like, oh my God, I can't stand it anymore. What, am I going to get the job? What would you tell them if you pulled the two of cards reversed? Um, if it's in reverse that they're feeling unsure footed, the possibility is still there. But it's really shaky. And I, I think it has everything to do with th them finding uh, within themselves. Because whenever something is in reverse, I suggest it's, it's an internal problem, with something you've got to work on sometimes. Finding balance within the self before they can achieve what they want. So, yes, it can unfold, but only if they find that balance within the healing within. Um, because there's something that even if they were to take that job, it wouldn't satisfy them unless they healed within themselves or it won't manifest until they achieve that healing state. So I would say yes, but it, it has its, it, it has its potential, but it really depends on, on the actions and intentions and the willingness to do self exploration and self inner journey work. Um, but now the, the caduceus itself has two snakes going up in it. That is a medical symbol that's modern. The original medical symbol only had one snake. Yep, that's so true. So you think about finding, you know, sometimes you got to do things on your own before you can allow that other half to come in and balance you out. So that really this is about finding the, the healing within before you can move forward. Yep. Um, and, you know, I, I, I have seen this. <laughs> oh, Lordy, the, you mentioned getting to know yourself and having those feelings of uncertainty and this being, you know, in, in how you turn kind of the emotional progression of the suits, you know, in the minor arcana. Um, and again, we're using the rider weight system, right? Mm -hmm. that, that there's wands and then there's cups and it's, you know, getting too caught up in your emotion 
um, maybe being more reactionary because you are ruled by only your emotions and you don't, you know, you haven't gotten to where you can just take a step back and, you know, work within your emotions or maybe even control them a bit or, you know, moderate them. I had this guy one time, oh my God, I love this guy and his wife. They have become family to me, which almost never, ever happens. Um, they're Indian. Um, they're back home in India now for a few years, but this guy, I mean, PhD published like this guy's pedigree. You, you couldn't imagine. And he couldn't get a job for love or money. So he kept coming to me and I kept telling him, I, I, I don't think you're going to get this one. I don't think you're going to get this one. The one I think you're going to get is going to be by water. It's going to be this, it's going to be that, which is ultimately where he ended up. And that's not, you know, oh, Bernadette was right. What the moral of the story is, is I swear to Swanee, every time that guy came in about his job, the two of cups would show up every single time and upright. So finally, one day I said to him, I said, I said, you're a emotional at work, aren't you? And he said, what does that mean? And so I explained that to him. And I said, and when you go into job interviews, you don't smile. You're not personable. You're like a robot. And I said, but you're never like that with me. But it just came to me because I'm like, why is this guy not getting all of these jobs that he's, they're calling him. He's not even having to apply. So the opposite was true. I mean, it's not that the opposite was true. It wasn't about, he, he didn't have emotions. He had tons of emotion, but kept stuffing it down and stuffing it down. So that, I mean, and listen, who wants to work with an automaton? Who, who, you know, science can be dry enough. Who <laughs> wants to go work with somebody mm -hmm. in, a, in a close laboratory environment and not have some kind of at least a, a modicum of camaraderie or yeah. personal connection? Anyway, so I told him, I said, listen, I said, the next job interview you go into, you've got to go with a couple of jokes and you've got to tell a couple of jokes. No, I will not. I said, <laughs> you will not get that job. And he said, well, I'll think about it. And, um, and I'm not making fun of his accent. We talk to each other like this all the time. And if you guys are crazy, I'm wearing this. My heart is in India, in the Himalayas. I dream of there every single day of my life. So do not write me and say, you're appropriating the Indian culture. No, I'm not. They're my people. Okay. So um, anyway, so he, he actually texted me from the interview. And he said, I can't believe it. I did what you said. I cracked a joke. He said, nobody laughed. I said, it's okay. At least you pushed yourself to do that. He got the job. So, awesome. um, and, and they commented how he was very relaxed and he looked like he was easy to get along with. And he's got the pedigree 9,000 miles long. So just know when you're looking at the two of cups, you know, again, um, I don't really have anything more to add at this point. Uh, well, I do. I mean, I could talk about all tarot cards all day long, right? We could do a year for each tarot card. Jane and I will be like 400 years old on our walkers, still talking about, you know, trying to get to the Ace of Pentacles. But is there anything else that you have to mention that maybe just kind of came to you? In regards to marriage, the two of cops can represent marriage, usually within a two-year cycle because you've got the number two there. Oh, yeah. If it's in reverse, it's about 18 months. 18, 18 months to 24 months is how I work it out. Now, that could be off a month or two because that's really a loose time connection. And ironically enough, you see the sign of July or, or Leo um, on the card, which is, you know, weddings are very common in June and July. So oh, very, yeah. June so, rides, July rides, yeah. And then you've got cancer, which is June. So June and July, it perfectly applies. So uh, with those big questions are, you know, is marriage in the future? Likely, yes. Now, I always try to tell people when I do a reading, doesn't matter when, who, what it's about. It's whether or not you embrace that possibility. Because if I say to you, you're going to get married in two years, and tomorrow you decide to tell that person to take a leap because you're sick of them, that's the end of that possibility. You've closed that door. Now you've opened other doors of possibility. Maybe you'll get back together. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll find someone else. Maybe you won't. There's just all sorts of possibilities. It's what you embrace. So you are empowered with choice with tarot. Tarot doesn't write things in stone, and it doesn't make decisions for you. And I think people need to know that. Right. The decisions are in stone. They you know, make. Exactly. And so um, I 
also would say that, um, and I can, I, it's, it's very difficult for me to uh, remember what the mottos are of every single zodiac sign, but um, each zodiac sign has a motto. Cancer is so, I feel. Yes, cancer is I feel. So uh, when you are looking at the cards and you, you might be, you know, if, if you've got your intuition open and receiving, you might keep seeing the cancer symbol, the cancer sign, the crab, and you, it might be the person sitting in front of you is a cancer. The person that they're interested about is a cancer. Um, maybe, the, maybe the person that's responsible for giving them the thumbs up or thumbs down for them to get a job is a cancer. Or that person might have that zodiac signs, personality traits and characteristics where you so know. Pardon? pardon? It doesn't have to be the primary sign. It could be in the navel chart somewhere. Yeah, so they can take on that personality and temperament. Yep, exactly. And so even like if it's within themselves where, you know, I've had clients say, you know, God, I'm just too sensitive. And I'm like, who told you that? Well, everybody. And then we talk about that so that they're not labeling themselves and, and feeling badly for something that when it is in balance and it is, um, you know, seen with the eye of beauty right yeah it really is now when you let it get out of balance and you do yeah. what we talked about earlier which is you shimmy back in that shell and you never come out again because you was scared um or scared as we call it in the south um you know not that so go along with the ded <laughs> yeah, that goes along. yeah I taught Dana. okay i'm learning lingo <laughs> yeah i thought dana the dead um is like billy crystal in the princess bride he's mostly dead <laughs> but you're D -E -D, you're dead. There's no coming back. There's no resurrection. You're just dead. So, um, so just, you know, as you guys start to work with these cards and listen, please don't let all this blow your mind. I know when I was a beginning reader and I was like, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to learn all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. I desire when I decided I wanted to be a reader, I bought every dang book and CD and every, I mean, it was piled stacks in my house. And I would read from this one and I would read from this one and I took the cards one card at a time and I would read what the two of cups meant in this person's book and what the symbolism meant in this person's book. And I tried to take notes and everything. And, you know, it, it, I, I, I probably studied for a year before I would really flip cards for anybody for money. I gave 400 free readings, 400 before I charged my first dime for any kind of reading. But you know, the minute I, the minute I flipped that first couple of cards, everything I thought I learned went right out of my head because it's got a, it's not a matter of the rote learning. It's a matter of the experiential learning. So please don't feel overwhelmed. We're just, you know, this video will be up on YouTube forever and you can take a look at it, you know, at your will it, go, go back and um, you'll see down in the, in the notes section, we've got timestamps where the, you know, the individual section, sections are the two of cups, you know, with its metaphysical correspondences, the two of cups with its, you know, what does it mean? Upright, um, the two of cups reverse, the two of cups in love, the two of cups, yes or no. And those are just to give you, you know, there's a formula that we follow so that you'll have a better understanding um, and that you can come back to time and again for all of you, you know, visual learner, video, visual and audio learner, visual and audio learners. And um, I think, I think you can even probably download a transcript um, some way, somehow. I'm pretty sure that you can. So in any event, um, you guys, thank you so very much for joining us. Uh, it's always such an honor and a privilege when somebody shows up and even listens to, you know, two words of what you have to say. And now I'm going to do my shameless plug for my deck because <laughs> this year, again, we were um, got really the one of the highest awards that you can get in the metaphysical industry. And... I, I, as a teacher of tarot and psychic and mediumship, I have found that the second, the second I introduce animals to anything we're doing, I watch people breathe and relax because animals are something that everybody can relate to, everybody loves. And this is the most comprehensive animal deck on the market. There's a hundred cards, 78 of them are tarot cards that are based on the Rider Waite tarot. There are 22 bonus cards in here making, and all of them are different animals. No card is repeated. 
And then there's another 49 cards that you can buy are the bonus packs. And then this fall, I have the um, I have the special deluxe edition where the bonus packs are already in there. And again, um, well, once you add the bonus packs, there are there is one animal that's repeated. There are owls in the main deck, and then there's uh, or an owl, and then there's a set of owls. Uh, in the bonus packs, but that still gives you 148 unique individual animals. And you, oh, oh, and da 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 da. Here's the piece de resistance, which is the guidebook that goes into it. It's uh, 370 something pages. It's full color. Um, you've got. Oh, I turned to the death card. No one wants to see that, right? So um, we'll go with the whale card, the judgment card. Great. It's not that, bad. It just means change. I know. You know, you you watch clients; they their eyes pop out. I know. They're like, "Oh no!" Yeah. So um, when I say it's a death card, the first thing I say that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. I say it really fast before anybody panics. I'm like, "Don't yep. panic." And they still sit there and breathe hard. But um, what you'll see, well, let's go to the Wheel of Fortune. You've got the tarot card meaning on one side, the meaning of the animal on the other side, and then the whole beginning is about. All those things we talked about, the metaphysical correspondences, the cardinal directions, the elements, the colors, the numerology, the zodiac signs, um, the symbolic keys that are in here. You'll learn what the major and minors are all about. Um, so I really hope you consider getting it. Uh, I just, I, I'm just so grateful every day I get emails from people who cannot wait to tell me um, what happened during a reading. You know, they're very discreet. They don't mention names or places. But they love to tell stories, and I love to read those stories. So, anyway, if you guys have questions, um, you know, please put it in the comments below. If you'd like to book a reading with Dana or I, our links to our readings are in the notes section below. And we hope you found this valuable, and we hope you um, are able to move forward now in a in a bigger, bolder, deeper way with your readings. You know, my advice for everybody is always to what Dana to stay wild. wild. And so, um, say bye to the folks, Dana. Bye. Thanks for, for tuning in. And I, I would hope if you have any questions, for, certainly email us because we're, we're happy to or text us or however you want to communicate with us. And uh, use the links below to get all of us and ask questions. Yes. Because <laughs> we're happy to answer your questions. Excellent. And thanks for listening. Have a good one. All right, one. Wild Ones. Take care. Oh, wait, one more thing. Dana's, oh, links, yes. to her, yeah, Dana's links to her books because they're amazing. They'll blow your mind. They'll take you a little bit to get through. But holy cow, are they amazing? Uh, the links to those on Amazon are in the notes section below. So thanks, for, thanks a lot, wild ones. Take care. Bye-bye.